The Marble Story. A few years ago, we were getting ready to visit a boy's home, a boy's home that had 65 boys in St. Elizabeth. And in preparation for our visit, what we call our success clinic, and as a part of the Inspiring Our Future 360 Degrees program, we were getting ready to go down to this boy's home. In preparation, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Jermaine, tell him about the marble story. I didn't think too much about it because I am the kind of person who can create a story on the spot. And so I didn't think too much of the marble story, but I asked, what marble story? I, I have no marble story. But anyways, we were planning and we were getting ready. We did our checks. We had made contact with the home and all of that. And so a couple weeks went by. I was just a week away from going down and I started researching the marble story. I went online to see what marble story is there. Is there a story about marble that is worth sharing with 65 boys in our intervention program? And so I went online, but I didn't see anything that was worth noting or worth uh, relating to a group of boys. And so I, I left it there. So we got all the gifts and clothing and different items and journals and coloring stuff and reading material. The stuff that we normally give in our color in what we call our success package. The stuff we usually give to children and young people to help them in their journey. And so we had packaged all this stuff and we were just now the night before and it was about 6.30 that evening and I said well I'm going tomorrow and I don't have a marble story. I may as well take some marbles. So I called the store that was close by and they had marbles and they were just about to close for the night and I hurriedly made my way to the store and purchase eight dozen marble eight dozen marble I bought the marbles I was getting ready and the morning early we were making our way down and so the program went so well we had we had a sponsor who prepared lunch for the boys. We had, we had a concert, the boys performed for us, and then it was about time for me to make my presentation. Just as I received the microphone, no marble story, the mic went dead. And while the technicians tried to figure out why is it that the mic wasn't working, and it was working so well all along, we had our parenting specialist there, Reverend Carleen. She was the one who was emceeing the program, moderating the program. And we had a lot of boys and young men. I, I, want to, I like to call them young kings that were in the room. And so as, I, as the room came to a standstill and quietness, so in the stillness of the room, I decided I was going to start a discussion with the boys, the young men who were there. And so I started by saying, marble is such a stupid game. How do you play marble and take one of yours, hit your, your neighbor's marble, and then you take that marble away? That's such a stupid game. One boy, said, sir, marble relaxes me. Whenever I play marble, it calms me, calm, calm give, bring a calm and a peace to me. Another boy, he said, sir, marble, marble is fun. I like playing marble. I enjoy it. Then another boy, he, this was the boy that really got the room engaged. He said, when I play marble, it helps me with distance, calculating distance and coordinates and the coordinates and directions. And I can calculate 
accurately direction and, and distance between one marble to the next in order to, to play and hit the next marble. And when the boy was finished articulating from a arithmetic and a scientific perspective, the entire room applauded him for his ingenuity. And then we went on and here was the marble story unfolding right before our eyes. I went on to say, there are two types of people we do not like to play marbles with. And uh, they said, yes, sir. I said, what's the first one? They said, sir, a thief. I said, that's true. We don't like to play marble games with a thief. Why? Because the thief tends to rob the game of the, its fun because they break all the rules and whenever you win, they never want to turn over their marbles to you. And so we don't like to play marbles with a thief. And I said, you can decide if you want to go through life like a thief. And whatever it is that you desire in life, if you want a car, you go get a gun and you go and get the car you want through illegal and wrong means. You can make that decision as a young man and then you face the consequences of that decision or that lifestyle. And so just like the game of marble, you can decide if you want to live your life like a thief. And then I said, this, there's a second type of person we don't like to play marble with. Who is that? And they said, sir, a pro. I said, that's right. Someone who is very good, very proficient at the game of marble. They, they, no matter how you think you can beat them, they are gonna beat you up and take away all your marbles. And especially the, the treasured ones, what we would call the, the bembe or the, the special pretty, very good looking ones, you know, as boys playing marble. And I said, yes, you can decide if you want to become good, an expert, a guru at what you do so that people will send for you wherever you are to come and perform your task and pay you and hire you. And I said, yes. And I started listing out some of the Jamaicans who were like pro at what they do. Not only our athletes like, like Usain and Asaf and Shelly and, and Veronica and Oti, but I started listing some of our scientists and some of our academic uh, accomplishments and, and the artists and stuff like that. I said, yes, you can choose to live like any one of these guys and become a pro at what you do and people will pay to hear you or to see you or for you to come and do whatever it is that you do. And so the choice is yours, young man. Young man, you can make that decision to live like a thief and suffer the consequences of a thief. Or you can choose to live like a pro and reap the rewards of living and doing well, doing the late night and the work, the hard work to become proficient at what you do and that was the unfolding of the marble story so we were we were just getting ready to close off when I said to them the, the latest research has said that boys in Jamaica will not live to see the average boy won't live to see age 25 and that's the average age lifespan of the boys and I said that is what the statistics is saying that you boys and we had nine year old, 10 year old boys, 11 year old boys in that room, all the way up to 17. And I said, that is what the statistics is saying that boys on average won't live to see 25 years because of the, the rate at which they're being killed and murdered. And I said to them, but I want you to close your eyes with me for a while and I want you to imagine or see through your mind's eye yourself at age 25. Close your eyes. See if you can see yourself. What are you wearing? Where are you? What is happening in the room where you are? Your dream, your aspiration. What is it that you want to become when you grow up? Who do you want to be? As I ask the boys, with your eyes closed, I want you to see who you are in the future, at age 25, you are now 12, 13 years from now, you are 15, 10 years from now, who do you see? And the first group of boys I asked, I said, sir, I don't see anything. I asked another nine-year-old, he says, no, sir, I don't see myself. 
I can't see myself. Ten year old, he says, sir, I can't see myself. By then, I had the pastor and the day lay hands on these boys and pray for them and help them to see into the future and to see themselves. And I asked another set of boys and they said, no, sir, I can't see myself at age 25. I said, tell me, what do you see? Can you see yourself dreaming and becoming who you want to become in life? Can you see yourself? And the boy says, no, sir. And after going around the room for a while and asking, is there anybody in this room who can see yourself at age five, 25? Is there a boy in this room who can see yourself, who you have become, your aspiration, your dream, what you long to be in life? And then finally one boy broke the silence. I said, sir, I see myself. I see myself. I can see myself. I can see myself. And I said, tell us what you see. Tell us what you see. And the boy said, I see myself. I am wearing my executive chef gown. And, and I'm in a big kitchen. And the room just went into an explosion as the boy just described how he was seeing himself at age 25. Every day, there are young men who are gone down in our nation who couldn't see themselves passing a certain age because the statistics has become their reality. And so, we have made it our purpose and our business to seek out these young boys, these at-risk youths, and to give them new hope and to give them new life and to speak into their lives and speak into their future and to let them know that they can make it they can make it regardless of the negatives around them they can be the difference in their community the change that they need to see perhaps is sometimes inside of them and so like the the, the, the tagline says treat a child the way you want it, your future to be we're treating these young men like kings and we're we're making them know that they have a life and God loves them and they can do all things through Christ. And there are young princes, young princes and young kings in the sight of God. And so we're depositing life in them. Because the word of God says in 2 John 10:10 10, 10, that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So we believe in our boys, we believe in our young men in Jamaica. Despite what the statistics say, despite what the records say, despite what the last shooting report says, we believe in our young men. And as a part of this program, we continue to go across this, this island and, and to share hope and new life with our young men. The story of the marble or the marble story has truly changed my life. It has truly changed quite a few young men lives, 65 boys. And when we were finished and we gave, we, we gave an altar call, several of them indicated that they wanted to, to give their heart to the Lord. When we were finished and I was autographing the journals, one boy had written in his journal that he was afraid to come and indicate that he wants to give his heart to the Lord, but he would love for us to pray for his mother who is at home not well, and he would love to give his heart to the Lord. And while we were praying for his mother right there, he gave his heart to the Lord and he was crying. He said, I feel so clean. I feel so new. And so the Lord God is working on the hearts of our young men, even in spite of what is happening. And so thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for being a part of this journey, inspiring our future, 360 degrees.